Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Feels like 90 this afternoon, but could be seeing strong thunderstorms tonight. We'll look at our severe threat and how long it lasts. Coming up. Okay, Ben, Governor Whitmer testifies before Congress. What she says made it even harder for Michigan to fight coronavirus. We're going to begin, though, with two stories that are breaking right now. First, live pictures from Sky 4 as uh, actually from the ground here as uh, protesters now gathering in front of Detroit police headquarters. But we're going to begin today with a young child and that child's mother being grazed by a bullet on Detroit's west side. Police say a family argument got out of control right before the shots were fired. Happened this afternoon on Rutherford Street, not too far from the lodge and Greenfield. Let's get to Victor Williams and uh, let's start, Victor, with how they're doing. Yeah, that's right, Devin Kimberly. You know, they say no one wins when the family feuds, and that's the case with this child being hurt. We're told that they're both in the hospital, but they are expected to be just fine. Tuesday afternoon, police were called down to a home on Rutherford near the intersection of Rutherford and Pembroke following a family argument that could have turned deadly. The incident started out as a fight between a brother and a sister. Somehow a weapon was retrieved and the sister who was carrying um, her baby. Both the woman involved and her baby were taken to the hospital by the alleged shooter, believed to be the victim's own brother. For my in, in temporary serious condition, so there's no threat of them dying at this time. But he didn't stick around to answer any questions at all. Right now we're looking for the person of interest that is believed to be the shooter. Commander Daryl Patterson of DPD's 8th Precinct says this just echoes the need for people to work their differences out with words and not with weapons. And as people, we need to learn how to settle our differences without gunfire, without gunplay. And, and that's all too often the case here across the nation. It's tragic. Thank God that the baby and the mother are, are, are listed as being, you know, going to be all right. So. Hopefully um, the young man we believe to be responsible for this incident turns himself in. And at this point, police are not releasing that name of the suspect. However, they are still searching for him at this point in time. Victor Williams, Local 4. Okay, Victor. Well, now to the threat of severe weather in the forecast. Let's uh, head to Ben's house. He's tracking a system that's going to be moving in through uh, overnight, Ben. Yeah, it seems odd, guys, that we've got temperatures now that are in the upper 80s and the high humidity, but the storm threat is coming at the coolest, most stable part of the day. Uh, there's a lot of dynamics at play in the upper levels, and that's what's fueling those storms. Let's go to Fort Live Radar, and we'll show you where they are right now, way on the other side of the lake. This line is over in central Minnesota, uh, just north of the Twin Cities. There's not a single warning out on that line of storms, but when we throw the lightning strikes on there, uh, you can tell that this is a pretty robust line, and you can see that counter in the corner. Notice that that started to increase from just a couple hundred into the 2000s, so that line's still strengthening, or at least it holding its strength uh, as it moves over uh, towards Lake Michigan. Severe risk is slight for all of us. It's category two that's a little bit higher than what we were looking at yesterday. And also the Storm Prediction Center has expanded the category three risk into uh, central parts of Michigan, into Gratiot County. So they're still looking at that the potential wind threat reaching pretty far into Michigan. That's what we're watching the most, straight line winds of 60 miles per hour and the possibility of large hail. We'll take a closer look at the timing of this coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, and with the threat of storms in the morning, Brandon, Paul, and the local 4 News Today team will be monitoring the situation and tracking it overnight. So be sure to wake up with them starting at 4.30 a.m. You can also follow it in real time with the local forecasters app. All right, let's get to the breaking news now that we're following here at the 5 o'clock hour. Live pictures of protesters as they gather again near downtown Detroit. Yeah, this is one of two protests we've heard are planned for tonight in Metro Detroit. Jason Colthorpe is following it for us. He is live there tonight. Jason, good evening. Good evening to you guys, and this looks very familiar. This is the way things have began with the Detroit protests over the last several days. 100% uh, peaceful uh, gathering here at the corner of Michigan and 3rd, just next uh, to Detroit Police Headquarters. We're listening to some speakers talk to everyone about why they're here, uh, what they're fighting for. Uh, one speaker a little while ago said, uh, we're going to march. And when that march is over, I want you to think about what you're going to do. Of course, last night that march uh, came back down Michigan Avenue, ended right as 
curfew was being instituted and there was a standoff with police and things ended peacefully. We are waiting to see what will happen tonight. We don't know which way they're going to march tonight, but um, uh, the young man who was involved in that last night, Stefan Perez, spoke a few moments ago, also rallying these, uh, the troops here, the gang, uh, everybody ready to go out and march tonight. Uh, and you're going to meet him uh, here in a few minutes and learn a little bit more about him. For now, uh, we're live downtown. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Jason, tonight the local four defenders are introducing us to this young leader uh, who made it his mission to keep these protests peaceful. 16 year old Stefan Perez led the group through the streets and helped to defuse tense moments. At the end, he got a phone call from the mayor and today Mayor Duggan had this to say about him. I thought from watching me had to be 24 or 25, the poise in leading that. I thought 16 years old and he just wants a world where he doesn't have to be afraid when he's stopped by a police officer. That's what he's fighting for. Um, and we are watching the next generation of this city's leaders emerging before our eyes. Indeed, let's uh, bring in defender Sean Lay. Sean, you got a chance to talk with Stefan today. And we really will also want to update everyone on just how tense also, Kimberly, this situation was. The local four defenders are learning that uh, police were dealing with a credible threat and they were on high alert that some of the protesters wanted to attack the public safety headquarters building, even try to set it on fire. So you're right, the 16 year old emerged from a crowd just like that one last night, not just to lead the protest, but to really calm things down because there were extreme tensions on both sides here. We went to go talk to Stefan Perez about why he felt the need to jump in last night like he did. A 16 year old filled with emotion, but showing restraint. Helping defuse a tense standoff between protesters and Detroit police. Leadership from a team in the face of boiling anger. And when it all ended peacefully, that team got a call of thanks from Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan. All right, thank you, thank you. If there's ever a problem, you call me directly, but you're terrific, thank you. I, I, I appreciate everything. His name is Stefan Perez from Southwest Detroit. Sitting down with local four defenders today, he revealed last night was the first time he's ever been to a protest. So the fact that I can go in the middle of Michigan and third, in front of everybody, put my hands up, get on my knees, say Black Lives Matter. The fact that I can do that and it can make a change is just, it's dramatic and it's a step. Perez says there were voices all around him, some urging the crowd to turn violent. And there was my voice and in my head, I'm like, I'm like, I have to fix this somehow. Stefan Perez fixed it by getting on his knees, using his voice and pleading for people to go home. Everybody needs to go home. Don't come to this city if you're going to start. Excuse my language, but start anything because that's unfair to the people who stay here. They still get to go home and kick back. We don't. I want to do that. You know, I'm a, I'm a kid. I want to let all my anger like that, but I can't necessarily. So the best way we can do that is let your anger subside by seeing the actual progression of the city, of yourself, of, of everyone. I got this. Go. 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 Interesting discussion with interesting discussion with Stefan Perez, just 16 years old. He is back here tonight, of course, hoping for the same result. Not one canister of tear gas fired, everyone dispersing peacefully. We're back at six o'clock with more for now. Live downtown, Sean Lay, local four defenders. What a great leader and yeah. spokesperson for the city. Well, music industry leaders have declared today Blackout Tuesday as protests continue over the killings of George Floyd and others at the hands of police. This as President Trump is facing widespread criticism today after his, a photo op outside of a church in the nation's capital. Alice Barr following it all from Washington. Alice. Devin and Kimberly, curfews and threats of military force have done little to stop protests in cities around the country. Now some prominent religious leaders are adding their voices, criticizing the president's response. Today, black ministers raising their voices against racial injustice outside St. John's Church across from the White House. The clergy joining the chorus of criticism over President Trump's photo op 
holding up a Bible in front of the historic church after police used tear gas to clear peaceful protesters out of the way. We stand today outraged with President Trump's use of the military against peaceful the Episcopal bishop who oversees the church accusing President Trump of using the Bible as a prop. It was an abuse of the spiritual tools and symbols of our tradition. Today, the president and first lady visiting a Catholic shrine, making no remarks and again posing for photos next to a statue of St. John Paul II. That appearance also condemned by a prominent Jesuit priest. These symbols are being used for political purposes. At the same time, Democratic governors are speaking out against President Trump's threat to deploy the military in cities across the country to quell looting and rioting. Being determined to work together to solve these problems is what we need more than anything right now. Not division, not threats of military. Presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden seeking to draw a contrast between himself and the man he wants to replace. I won't fan the flames of hate. I'll seek to heal the racial wounds that have long plagued our country. While the current commander-in-chief is eager to show he has the power and is willing to use it. Protests have gone from American soil to cities around the world, with many foreign leaders expressing deep sadness and frustration. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, we're just getting started here at 5. Here's Dr. Frank George. It's a side of recovery catching some COVID-19 survivors off guard. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, the unexpected impact the virus is having on their mental health and what experts say can really help. Stimulus check concerns. You may be getting something in the mail that looks like a scam from the IRS, but it may not be. Important information coming up in my Help Me Hank report. Governor Whitmer telling members of Congress today she wants the federal government to do more. Coming up, what she had to say about getting testing supplies and what the state's been doing with that $3.2 billion in federal money. And we continue to follow breaking news happening right now in downtown Detroit, where we're seeing a fifth day of protests. This is at 3rd Street and Michigan, right in front of Detroit Police Headquarters. We're going to keep checking in with it as it progresses. Um, we'll be right back with more news.